now call the June 29th, 2022 regular and housing authority meeting to order. I will ask the clerk to call the roll. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. Supervisor Anderson. Supervisor Lawson Reamer. Supervisor Desmond. Here. Vice Chair Vargas. Vargas here. Chair Fletcher. Fletcher here. Tenant Commissioner Penalosa. Wonderful. We are uh, meeting uh, uh, to start our meeting as both the uh, Housing Authority and the regular meeting. We welcome our commissioner. Thank you for joining us here today. Uh, first on the agenda is non-agendized public communication. This is an opportunity for the public to address the board on matters that are within our jurisdiction but are not on today's agenda. The only action the board may take is a referral to the chief administrative officer. A reminder, according to Rule 4A, members of the public who are non-English speaking and need interpretation assistance will be allotted extra time to facilitate translation. And according to the rules of procedure, we will hear from up to five in-person speakers and five virtual speakers. Any remaining non-agendized public communication speakers will be heard at the conclusion of our meeting. I'll ask the clerk to call forward uh, up to five in-person and five virtual speakers at this time. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. We have 13 total requests to speak on matters not listed on the agenda, three in person and 10 by phone. For those that have requested to speak via phone, if you could please dial into the conference line now using the instructions that were provided to you. We will begin with the in-person speakers. As your name is called, if you could please come forward and stand against the east wall under the murals until it is your turn to speak. You will have two minutes to address the board and I would like to invite forward the three following individuals, Audra, Consuelo, and Mark Dorian. And if you could please state your name before beginning your comments. Use the name Audra. So this is more for the people of San Diego. Um, I urge you to pay attention to what they bring down the pipe because they're getting more aggressive with their tactics and their agenda is full of new world order. Um, if you don't know what that is, I suggest you research it as well as the Great Reset and the World Economic Forum and you'll see their plan. They create problems to offer a solution. They leave people needing help from the government and um, act like they're gonna be your knight in shining armor. Um, it affects all of us. Uh, if you don't pay attention, uh, they will be living in smart cities um, with a social credit score, unable to travel freely and even more a slave than you are now. And if you don't think that you're a slave, then you're still asleep because you're not paying attention to what they are doing. Um, every time they bring someone something forward in this agenda, it is um, a part of a greater agenda. And so um, it's something that people need to be paying attention to because if you don't, um, it's gonna be far worse off than uh, if you start paying attention. Even if this board doesn't listen because they don't, it's still important to pay attention so you understand what's going on and what's coming down the pipe because it's very dangerous for the people to not pay attention. And Nathan, I can't believe you said you wouldn't come on my radio show. That's so weird. I figured, why not? Are you afraid? Afraid of white might come out? or you just hate me that much? Probably the latter, and that's okay. But I heard you're hiring, can I have a job in your office? Probably not there too, huh? Because you would discriminate against me. It's too bad, it's very sad. But I see what you're doing, I know what you're about, and you're totally transparent even though you think you aren't. And your reign is short-lived. Thank you, next speaker. Mark, um, so I noticed uh, in an article a couple of days ago that uh, it said that uh, low-income housing, some of the apartments are literally a million dollars plus, plus over a million dollars, which, and, and that was like from the news. That wasn't like some weird video from YouTube or the web. So I, I thought that was uh, really strange. So again, I'll recap what I've said before, and this is more for the public because honestly, these people don't care. They're trying to make money for their corporation. And of course, they try to do it in the name of something good while people they want make a lot of money. So while you're spinning, I don't even know what your budget is for the homeless. I'm gonna guess it's 50, 100 mil this year, something like that, for $10 million. <clears throat> I reiterate for like the fourth time. On Fiesta Island, they have a, an, um, they have a 3D printer by Appy's Core. 
It will 3D print houses in uh, 24 hours. 20 of them would do 7,500, pretty much the homeless population, in about a year. Um, for $1,000 each, you could make Lego-like ones that stack and pack on top, side to side, 10 by 10s. When you're homeless and you're wondering if your head's gonna be bashed in that night, just having a little room that would lock where you can keep your stuff and, and try to go get a job uh, would be great. They're already getting uh, EBT cards for food. You could have several bathroom structures out front that would be printed. Um, you could also have uh, a, a adjoining area for food, you know, like a sink, cooking, a microwave, such as that for them to share. This could be a godsend. The homeless problem could mostly be over literally this year, if you cared. Fiesta Island, it'd take about a seventh of the island at the very end, not even that much. Very easy to do. That They could take, uh, get free bus and trolley passes off SeaWorld Drive. If you care and want to do anything, they don't. You guys should insist on this. They're going to spend, what, 50 million instead of 10? It's your money. Thank you. Next speaker. And the problem will be worse next year. Consuelo, taxes initially meant for one thing are now being used for other things. Government is just a big friggin' racket. You guys break rules all the time. Conflict of interest galore. For future public health safety, which things, which brings me to this question. Who the heck is riding your public transportation? Such a joke. Two weeks ago, I was downtown. I filmed 10 passing buses within 15 minutes. Each bus had less than six people on it. There were two that had zero. This was during rush hour traffic, mind you. Here's where the federal grant money, our tax dollars, are going. I read a post that said Maryland passed the strongest carbon pollution reduction goal in the country, committing to the state to net zero climate emissions by 2045 and requiring a 60% carbon reduction by goal 2031. My reply, only the ones paying close attention understand that this is nothing to be happy for. Agenda 2030, Agenda 21, here we come. You will own nothing and be happy. You are the carbon they want to eliminate. They will tax the shit out of us, then have the audacity to say our public transit system is free after we've already paid for it. Enough with being suckers. Come on, they're always offering free shit back to the dumbed down, unsuspecting, gullible slaves, tax cattle. Reminder, the rat always believes the cheese is free right before getting trapped and killed. For the love of humanity, people, pay attention, get involved. Take responsibility for yourselves, enough with allowing government to dictate and run the show. Thank you. Now we will hear from those that have requested to speak by phone. When it is your turn to speak, you will be unmuted and you will hear a recording that will tell you to begin your comments after the beep. I would like to remind the callers they should mute their TV or live video stream before they begin speaking. We will begin with our first caller. And again, if you could please state your name before beginning your comments. Good morning, Board of Supervisors. My name is Becky Rapp. I'm a concerned parent and public health advocate. As you continue to move forward with the marijuana ordinance we plan to implement in our unincorporated communities, I know you're sensitive to those who have been negatively impacted by the war on drugs. Individuals who were incarcerated for violating marijuana laws and now allowing them a second chance in the business. What I'm concerned with are the voices that are not being heard. Those who have experienced tragic situations due to illegal transactions and violations of those who were selling marijuana. I'm raising a child who has suffered great consequences due to his biological mother's marijuana habit. He purchased pot, became highly addicted, causing her to have a mental and emotional breakdown. She was unable to support her child and living in her car. Severe neglect and emotional abuse have left this child with scars that will last a lifetime. My question is how the county plans to protect and repair the damage to young people 
who have paid the consequences of their parents' marijuana habit. Perhaps this, this, the county should consider listening sessions for families who have been negatively impacted by the war on drugs. Those who have experienced death by suicide of a loved one, schizophrenia, and paranoia. Perhaps direct staff to focus on supporting and including these individuals in the social equitable marijuana conversation. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. Good morning. My name is Nancy Logan. Kudos to the last speaker. I don't know her, but she did an amazing job, and it's true. Um, I'm here to speak about a week-long observance that culminates on Sunday, July 10th, which is Anti-710 Dab Day. Turned upside down, the digit 710 spell oil, O-I-L. Cannabis oil is a type of high-potency marijuana dab. College students call it taking the dab or using the dab rig when referring to using high THC content marijuana, which is the most common product sold at marijuana storefronts. Last year on 710 Dab Day, there were well-attended walks through parks in remembrance of those young people for whom marijuana use was fatal. A particularly poignant story comes from Laura Sack, who founded the National Organization on Johnny's Ambassadors, also the sponsors of National Marijuana Facts Week. Her son Johnny's young and vibrant life ended by suicide after his descent into addiction to high-potency marijuana dab. Her story is a call for students, young adults, and parents across America to educate themselves about the risk of today's high-THC marijuana products and to better understand the potentially devastating effects of youth mental health. Hopefully, this Board of Supervisors can be counted on among those trusted adults and healthcare professionals who are concerned about the harmful effects of marijuana on our children, teenager, and emerging adults. Thank you for the opportunity for me to share this information, which is meant to save lives. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. Um, good morning um, to all the supervisors. Uh, my name is Barbara Gordon. We all experience different levels of mental health as we go through life. In fact, 50% of us will experience mental health challenges in our lifetime. According to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, or NIDA, suicide is a leading cause of death among young adults in the U.S. I work with young people, and I wanted to share with you a recent study published in the Journal of American Medical Association, conducted by NIDA, who analyzed the data from more than 280,000 young adults, 18 to 35, showed that marijuana use was associated with increased risk of thoughts of suicide, suicidal ideation, suicidal plans, or suicide attempts. The number of adults in the U.S. who use marijuana more than doubled from over 23 million in 2008 to 45 million in 2019. And the number of daily or nearly daily users almost tripled from almost 4 million to 10 million in 2019. As a society, we have normalized and commercialized the use of marijuana. To protect our, our young people, we need to better understand the association of marijuana use as a contributing factor to suicide. It's important that the county implement policies that foster good mental health, which enables people to realize their potential, cope with the normal stresses of life, work productively, and have happy relationships with others. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. Shauna Django. 
I don't know if everybody can hear me. Um, yes, please proceed. Good morning. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning, um, supervisors and the public. Um, I came, uh, I drove 140 miles round trip to um, attend the meeting on June 15th. And um, when I was there, I um, informed you all that I had uh, written a letter to a county employee um, in which I was trying to warn him that I thought that he had been conned. And as a result, um, that letter ended up in the hands of the people that I was um, had made a complaint about, and I was retaliated against. And my letter uh, should have never, ever um, been turned over to them um, in order to protect me. And I believe that I've been retaliated against. And um, it's been two weeks since I came there, and nobody from the county has contacted me. Nobody has um, um, let me know what's going on or if they're looking into this or what's happening. And I, I'm up here um, really just terrified uh, about what's going to happen. Um, the day that I, I received the cease and desist letter, um, the other appellant um, that that had complained also regarding this uh, Sandia Creek gate, um, her house, uh, somebody uh, uh, um, broke her window. They, it, 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 I'm very, I'm very afraid, and I just don't feel like anybody in uh, local law enforcement is willing to do anything. When I went to the sheriff, they told us basically that they're not even going to take a take an incident report. And I wasn't alone. I was with people, strangers that had saw my video. Thank you. Your time is up. We'll go to the next call. Your outbursts are disrupting the conduct of the meeting. Your first warning. Next speaker. Good morning. My name is Peggy Walker. Like those who spoke before me, those of us who work in public health understand that marijuana is arguably the greatest contributor to poor mental health outcomes for youth today. We were disappointed by a recent warning from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, that's SAMHSA, showing marijuana also to be the leading cause of youth-related ER visits today. SAMHSA's Drug Abuse Warning Network said youth under 18 account for nearly 10% of ER visits related to marijuana. Marijuana was also found to be the most common drug and polysubstance alcohol-related youth ER visits. Physicians say teens arrive in the ER, ER with, with issues ranging from stomach illness, cannabis hypernesis syndrome, anxiety, depression, panic attacks, psychosis, and schizophrenia to violent behavior. They may arrive screaming and vomiting. They may arrive after passing out or having hallucinations. Experts warn that today is high THC cannabis products are poisoning users, including teens. ER doctors repeatedly expressed concern over the rise in, me in marijuana-related ER missions locally and say higher potency products are contributing. A radius hospital pediatrician has also called hospital admissions of children under 10 due to accidental marijuana ingestion, a serious public health problem in San Diego. These rising ER admissions are one more reminder that public health, not the interests of for-profit marijuana dealers, should be at the forefront of our marijuana policy. Thank you. Thank you. For the remaining callers that requested to speak on a matter not listed on the agenda, please hang up and call back at the conclusion of the session. Chair Fletcher, that concludes the request for non-agenda public communication this morning. Next on our agenda is approval of the statement of proceedings minutes for the regular meeting of June 15th, 2022. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Is there a second? Second. Second by Vice Chair Vargas. Let me ask the clerk to please call the roll. Thank you. Supervisor Anderson. Aye. Supervisor Desmond. Aye. Vice Chair Vargas. Vargas, aye. Chair Fletcher. Fletcher, aye. That motion passes unanimously with all with 
with uh, all supervisors who are present voting aye. We'll now proceed with the formation of the consent calendar. Members of the public who wish to speak will have the opportunity uh, once supervisors and our Housing Authority Commissioner uh, Penulosa have had the opportunity to pull any items from consent they wish. Uh, we will be doing both the Housing Authority consent and Board of Supervisors simultaneously in a bifurcated vote. Uh, but uh, for the public, if you wish to comment on items that are on the Housing Authority consent or the Board of Supervisors, you will have that uh, opportunity. Um, to begin, we will start with Tenant Commissioner Francisco Penalosa. We welcome you to our meeting. Are there any items you wish pulled for discussion from the consent calendar today? No? Do you have any items to pull from consent? Okay. Yes, we do. Every day. Every day. Yes, we do. Thank you so much. And we welcome you and we, we appreciate that wonderful spirit. Every day we are doing the best we can. And I, we appreciate that and appreciate you joining us. Um, Supervisor Anderson. No, thank you. Uh, Supervisor Desmond. Yeah, I'm just going to pull item seven. We got, I got, there's several uh, friendly amendments to that. I just wanted to get through those. Perfect. So, uh, and I'll make a motion to approve the uh, balance <clears throat> of the consent calendar along with the housing item. Is that right? Perfect. Okay. That's perfect. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Vargas. Thank you. I'm happy to second uh, that motion. And I just want to make a comment to on item number three. Thank you to Brian and the Parks and Rec team for bringing the Comprehensive Tree Program to the board. Um, I'm really excited uh, that it's using the California Healthy Place um, Index to provide uh, Public Health Alliance in Southern California to really uh, look at where uh, we're going to have more in, in District 1. We're going to be able to have more canopy, tree canopies um, in the Tijuana River Valley where there is, there is a tree canopy of 9%. So I think it's going to make a really big difference. So I appreciate it and I'm happy to support that. And then on number five, I also want to thank staff for working on this planning grant submittal and for connecting with our environmental justice community um, as well around this issue. I appreciate Luge and, and all the work that they're doing particularly uh, for how our new uh, Office of Sustainability and Environmental Justice is going to bring stronger relationships to our communities to really uh, think about collective plan to address how we elevate our unincorporated area resist resiliency and sustainability. So um, I'm really looking forward to this and I want to say thank you to our uh, community par grant partners that are already in this process, Bikes del Pueblo, San Isidro Health, Bank of Center for Sustainability, Spring Valley Chamber of Commerce, San Diego Youth Services and Spring Valley Community, oh, and uh, the San Diego Youth Services, sorry. So thank you again. I hope we have a, um, good news in October and uh, when we hear back from the grant awardees. And like I said, I'm happy to second that motion and uh, support this consent agenda. Perfect. Thank you, Vice Chair. I also want to echo my support of item five. I appreciate staff bringing forward, finding this opportunity, partnering with our community-based organizations. This can have a real positive impact in the Spring Valley area. Um, County of San Diego, we're taking aggressive steps on climate change, our cap, our regional decarbonization framework, everything we're doing. Uh, but with this grant, we have the opportunity to organize, plan, and hopefully really implement some solutions on a community scale. And I think this is the right approach and, and effort to uh, really try and impact uh, particularly the residents of the community of Spring Valley. And so uh, join in hoping that we get this. and. I uh, really appreciate the proactive efforts in going out and, and seeking efforts where we can make a positive impact in our communities. Uh, we're now going to turn to public comments. As a reminder for members of the public, uh, please have your comments relate to those items that are on today's consent calendar, and then we will take a bifurcated vote. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. We do have eight total requests to speak on items on the consent calendar for individuals in person and for requesting to speak by phone. As a reminder, item seven was pulled from the consent calendar for discussion. So any members of the public that have requested to speak on that item, please hold your comments until the board discusses item seven. Uh, we'll receive public comment on that item separately. Uh, any members of the public that have requested to speak by phone, uh, if you could please uh, dial into the conference line now using the instructions that were provided to you. And we'll begin with the in-person speakers. As your name is called, if you could please come stand against the east wall under the murals until it is your turn to speak. I'd like to invite forward the following individuals. Robbie Morgan, Robert German, Audra, and Mark Dorian. You'll have two minutes to address the board and if you could please begin by stating your name for the audio record.
Hello, board. I am Robbie Andrette Morgan. I am the real Pugnose Marissa. I have just, uh, I'm the one who is fixing all the banks. Uh, I'm the one who's defending the country, defending the city, and finding out all these things that's going on in the city. I'm really tired. So I'm winded because I'm, I'm just tired. And so I'm just letting you know really that I'm here and that any questions that you have or you want to know that I'm willing to uh, give you guys information on everything that I've found. I am the real city girl. I am really city, city, city. And I'm just telling you that I'm here. That's basically all I wanted to say. Thank you. I use the name Audra. So like I was just saying, this is full of a bunch of BS, but you're going to be spending $203,855,788 on the housing authority. Hopefully that really does go to help people for Section 8 housing. Um, but you want to plant 3,500 trees a year, and you want to reduce the greenhouse gases by 1,796,692 by 2030. And at the rate that you're going, um, it's going to take you 1,879 years to reduce that by 2030. It's impossible. So I don't really know why you're doing that, but you're spending $2 million on trees uh, just for 3,500 of them. So, you know, your plan's going to, who knows how much that's going to cost. Um, and again, here we go. You want to conserve mountain lions and mule deer. So you're purchasing, um, expanding some land by 460 acres, buying up more land. There we go. And then grant funds for transformative community uh, climate planning uh, for the disadvantaged unincorporated areas. So there you go, implementing that there because you're saying there's like land use and capabilities and a bunch of BS. Um, there's the um, bipartisan infrastructure law and there's a $1.2 trillion fund for that that you guys can tap into um, because you have a program by program info on spending to seek, which is transportation, climate, energy, environment, broadband, and other things like roads and bridges, exactly what you're doing. And the fact that you want to purchase a water system in an unincorporated area is a little bit terrifying um, because they went bankrupt. Was that because of you? And now you you have access to the water, which is really bad because you guys can put anything in the water, you can taint it and make it so that people have to uh, move out of that area. Mark, the, um, so for perspective, in case all of you didn't catch it, there, a million dollars plus on a low cost uh, apartment means for about nine apartments, they're going to spend the $10 million on nine apartments or less that I would solve the entire problem on Fiesta Island of the 7,500 homeless people. And our tax dollars are subsidizing it forever but because they, we pay part of their rent. These little stack and pack -ems, I mean, the, the uh, 3D printed 10 by 10s I'm talking about, they could be shipped around, uh, rented or given to other cities. Um, and once they were printed, they would just be. There wouldn't be any further cost. Um, as far as it, your climate change thing goes, uh, everyone should see the John Coleman video, uh, John Coleman KUSI climate change or global warming. Put that in on YouTube. These people are not cr uh, accredited meteorologists. He won meteorologist of the year. You should all see, also see uh, Fran Drescher's uh, husband about 10 years ago. It was her husband, uh, Shiva something. Uh, um, you can find him on the web, put in Shiva, uh, global warming. Um, a real genius, four degrees from MIT, an actual genius who tells you what a scam it is, obviously, that they want to stop pollution, so they're selling carbon credits to corporations. If you wanted to stop murder, would you sell murder credits to murderers? Does that sound like it would stop murder to you? No. Now, it's true that uh, some amount of carbon holds in some warmth in the atmosphere, but it's less than a fifth of the effect. In fact, it's mostly uh, solar activity that affects the weather. And um, 
So uh, nine seconds for really important topics. This is such a complete scam. I've been in PB since I was a kid. The ocean hasn't changed. It's never even just stayed on the seawall. It looks just like it always did. Total bull. Thank you. Next, next speaker. Good morning. Robert Gurman. I'm spokesperson, spokesperson for uh, Citizens Against Gillespie's expansion low-flying aircraft. We support item six. We would like to, uh, let's see, I was jotting some notes down. The BIL uses public money for a public airport for better public access, to enhance public safety, to better public health. Um, I have a slideshow. We all know this slide, I think, right? We've, this to refresh your memory. The next one is, if you can remember this slide and look at the next slide, the difference between moving Lindbergh to Miramar. Just a, a simple swap. The CEQA sequel, sequel situation would be have less impact you're just switching airport for airport. We, uh, it sits on an earthquake fault, Lindbergh does. It's susceptible to sea level rise. And the future, like I said last time, or showed you last time, is uh, urban taxis. You can't have urban taxis down there. You don't have the room. And it's in a hole. Miramar is up on top. You can service the whole county. The money is available with this BIL, and it uh, any questions on the two slides? I have my last slide is a little bit uh, different on that. But this is outdated. It's time to move the location. A single airport or runway, you're wasting your money. You're wasting taxpayers' money. And it's a bad investment. Lindbergh is a loser. And it's as simple as that. And the next slide should be coming up. Okay, and this is what our eight county airports are for. They're called, it's called, a, if I'm a union member, retired union member. They're nothing more than a double-breasting system. That's all they are. They take work away from the union shops that are at the only union airport in San Diego. Thank you. Thank you. We will now hear from those that have requested to speak by phone. When it is your turn to speak, you will be unmuted and you will hear a recording that will tell you to begin your comments after the beep. I would like to remind the callers that they should mute their TV or live video stream before they begin speaking, and we will begin with our first caller. Truth. Item one, the Live Oak Ranch project. 20 years later and still no construction. Item two, the Village Walk Townhomes project. Five years later and still no construction. Item three will cost $2 million to purchase of 3,500 trees, just like Audra said. Item four is money from the state to acquire 460 more acres of land, using the excuse of conserving mule deer and mountain lion habitat. We always need more mountain lions. Can we go back to the rats and toads? Item five is the California Strategic Growth Council trying to implement transformative climate communities. On their website, they have a problem with personal vehicle use. They want people to walk, bike, and use transit. They want 90,700 acres of land conserved and over 9,400 affordable stack and pack homes with greater infill and compact development to go along with the county's regional decarbonization framework, anti-car goals for the unincorporated areas. Item six, the bipartisan infrastructure law claims to ease inflation, but it actually spends $1.2 trillion. The law's categories include transportation, climate, energy, and environment, and broadband. That's internet sensors. Item eight, the county seems to have no problem digging a test well capable of supplying the same water quality and rate of flow as the primary well, along with a brand new secondary well. So water does exist in the ground, despite allegations of drought. Consuelo might be right, and you believe that. The Earth is amazing how it manages to disprove lying humans so often. And phase one construction is estimated at $700,000. Not even a very high price to get that water under the ground and mitigate claims of drought. The Thank you, we'll hear from our next caller. Uh, 
Paul Hinken. Good morning, supervisors. Those are you. Those of you who are there. Um, I'm not sure who's there actually. Uh, it sounds to me like you're waving the California Environmental Quality Act EQA uh, really a, very often, and um, I feel that. Uh, when you wave it so often, it could result in contractors getting careless and causing environmental harm. And um, actually, I'm kind of wondering if uh, that's sort of why uh, you haven't done anything with uh, the money you've already approved for the um, five oak thing and the village walk thing in Ramona. Um, and uh, as for the bipartisan infrastructure law, um, that's really a funny term, bipartisan infrastructure. Is infrastructure really bipartisan or not? Anyway, um, I also noticed uh, that uh, I think we may have lost that caller, so we'll go to the next caller. Shauna Dango, item number six. Um, hi again. Um, the reason I'm I'm talking about this is um, back in September of 2021. Um, I became aware of two bills. Um, the first one was AB 421, and in that bill, a special district um, in Riverside had um, wanted to change the laws in respect to privately maintained roads that are serviced by special districts, districts would be able to get a share of gas tax. Um, the, the bill didn't get passed. It, it died in committee. And then the, the following year, the special district um, created a new bill, SB 415. Um, that, I guess, is a two-year bill, and it's sitting on a shelf. I don't really know what that means, but um, it didn't really um, happen. In September, um, I realized that um, this, the, the district was no longer going to rely on changing the law, that they had... Um, found a way in which they could um, funnel the money through the county coffers. And um, if uh, you can see all of this um, in the Riverside Lasso October me meeting, um, and where the supervisor talked about doing this, and if they get, if the county, if the state of California finds out, the worst thing that could happen is that the California um, auditor would just ask for the gas taxes money back. Um, I'm starting to shake again right now because, um, to me, this is something that looks unlawful. Um, and I'm concerned that um, our county is going down that same path. One of the ways in which to get those, count, uh, only way to get uh, gas taxes is you have to have a pavement condition index on the roads that um, you want to request money for. Thank you. Your time is up. And Chair Fletcher, that concludes public comment on the items on the consent calendar. All right. We will uh, first take a vote on the regular Board of Supervisors consent calendar. These will be the items that are outlined uh, on there for the Board of Supervisors. It will be all the items minus item seven that Supervisor Desmond pulled. We have a motion by Supervisor Desmond, second by Vice Chair Vargas. Let me ask the clerk to please call the roll. Thank you. Supervisor Anderson. Aye. Supervisor Desmond. Aye. Vice Chair Vargas. Vargas, aye. Chair Fletcher. Fletcher, aye. That motion passes unanimously with all supervisors who are present voting aye. We will now take a vote on the Housing Authority consent calendar. Uh, same motion by Supervisor Desmond, seconded by Vice Chair Vargas. Let me ask the clerk to please call the roll. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. Tenant Commissioner, Tenant Commissioner Penalosa? Yeah. Supervisor Anderson? Aye. Supervisor Desmond? Aye. Vice Chair Vargas? Vargas, aye. Chair Fletcher? Fletcher, aye. 
That motion passes unanimously with all con commissioners who are present voting aye. Thank you, Commissioner Penuloso. We appreciate you joining us, and we appreciate your commitment to doing right as best we can every day. Thank you very much, sir. We look forward to seeing you at our next meeting. We will uh, now proceed into our regular discussion items as the Board of Supervisors. Uh, we will begin with agenda item number seven, exploring options to enhance community resiliency to energy emergencies throughout San Diego County. Uh, an item brought forward by Supervisor Desmond. We will start with Supervisor Desmond. Thank you very much, Chair. I appreciate it. And uh, this, this item is really about <clears throat> ensuring that people in the unincorporated areas <clears throat> have access to uh, reliable electricity um, throughout the uh, season here. Um, it's consistent and reliable. Access to electricity is crucial for quality of life <clears throat> and for the safety of uh, San Diegans throughout the county. So with looming threats of reliability, our existing grid, whether it's supply chain issues, increasing demand for electricity, the war in Ukraine, you name it, you know, I think it's very important that we start preparing for possible grid failures and other um, energy emergencies and possible fires in the unincorporated areas. So uh, staff, I understand you need time to research uh, this item, particularly for the microgrid, potentially microgrid uh, research, which could be using clean energy, solar energy, uh, and, and those, on those grounds. But I would like to potentially encourage uh, staff, if you could do things sooner in 90 days, rather than the 180 days uh, necessary, particularly for the generators. If the generator uh, portion could be uh, addressed sooner rather than later, that would be uh, beneficial. So perhaps with respect to items A and B in the board letter to get the backup generators in the hands of county residences and the businesses who need them uh, soon. So I've uh, got a couple of friendly amendments, uh, one from, D, uh, from our chair and vice chair, uh, potentially the same one. It's um, uh, in item number, recommendation number two, uh, asking that uh, the uh, county work, including work with partnerships with both SDG&E and the San Diego Community Power and community choice aggregators in the region uh, on this effort. So that's, I'm happy to accept that friendly amendment and that was also from our vice chair's um, uh, office as well. Um, another one, uh, friendly amendment, I'm gonna skip to item three and I've got these. Supervisor, why don't we go to Sue Vice Chair Vargas? Why don't we go to Vice Chair Vargas? Vice Chair Vargas. Oh, you wanna in introduce them? Okay. I had a question on one of them, but Yeah, well, ahead. maybe we should hear what it is first. Vice okay. Chair Vargas. Okay. Uh, you brought this item forward. And so I think that one of the things that we want to make sure is that um, that we make sure that we're providing cleaner options as well. So the first one was including other energy providers, which I think you mentioned, like SDCP and Clean Energy Alliance at their community uh, resilience programs, right? So that was one. Uh, the second one was to request emissions data for the list of qualified gas power generators to be included within uh, when options return to the board 180 days from now so that we have that uh, that information. And then as part of the research, coordinate with the analysis um, uh, that is being prepared with the County Office of Sustainability and Environmental Justice and USD's Energy Policy Initiative Center on emissions uh, from sources and include opportunities through the regional decarbonization frameworks coordination across local, state, and federal levels. And then last is uh, the county should also include other green and zero emission alternatives like solar power weed generators and battery storage systems and others. So, those would be the the, the four uh, recommendations um, that we that I would be interested in. Okay, I, I have a question on on item two, and I'm fine with all of these. They're, uh -huh. they're good, but I'm, what's a qualified generator? I don't know. What's a, what are you looking for there? I think what what happens is right now, if you look at the data, and there's um, SCG&E has it. They're basically they're not actually sharing um, how what the emissions are, and so. Okay. Let's say you have asthma or you have, um, you don't know what's what's out there. And so we just want to make sure that we have that data so that we're able to know, so that people know and they're informed. Okay, and I'm fine with that. But I, I guess what I was also asking is if we can move this, if, if the generator portion of this could be moved up and it's not as much research, that maybe we just say we use, it'll ask them to use the least GHG uh, generators uh, would be preferred in that, uh, you know, for now, I guess before we get the data back in 160 days or 180 days, because that's six months from now, it's the middle of the fire season. Yeah, so I don't know that necessarily you have to, um, I mean, it would be great to use the ones that are yeah. less. Um, that would be great, but I just think we want to gather data, and I think I'm also worried well, about I'm saying say both. Oh, okay, both, yeah. So, yeah, get the data. Okay. Absolutely have that come back in 180 days, but if they can get some of these generators out sooner, 
than the 188 days that we, they use the most efficient, uh, least GHD yeah, producing generators. Okay. For, yeah. uh, is is kind of what is what I'm asking. Yeah. Okay. okay. So can we do, let's restate for the record the, the amendments if you don't mind, Vice Chair, and okay. make sure we're all on the same page here. So okay, the first one is um, ADD or include other energy providers like STCP and Clean Energy Alliance and their community resilience programs. The second one is to request emissions data for the list of qualified gas power generators. Uh, oh, you have them all up there? There it is. Okay. okay. All right. So I think we would just add. Uh, just add. I just, it'd be just just be direction for staff if they do it earlier to. Uh, okay. Uh, to use we'll the most efficient generators. Thank you. Thank very, you for that. So I'm happy to second the motion. Okay. And we have a motion by Supervisor Desmond, seconded by Vice Chair Barks. Um, let me uh, see if we have any public speakers in this item. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. I'd just like to note for the record that those amendments were sent to the Clerk of the Board's Office and are part of the public record. Uh, we do have five total requests to speak on this item, three in person and two by phone. I'd also like to note for the record, we did not receive any e-comments on this item. Any members of the public that have requested to speak on this item by phone, if you could please dial into the conference line now using the instructions that were provided to you. We'll begin with the in-person speakers. And I'd like to invite forward Robbie Morgan, Mark Dorian, and Audra. You'll have two minutes to address the board, and if you could please begin by stating your name for the record. Good morning, board. I'm Robbie Morgan. I, I'm also the real Pugnose Marissa. I had to redirect this because I was not awake. I have odd hours. I'm in the city constantly. Again, I'm gonna say if there's anything that you wanna know, I've been in the city, I've been doing this for 25 years. I'm ready to come out. So anything you wanna know, I pretty much have it. All the way from Bin Laden to uh, 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 Hussein. I also work for the president, so I've been do, in this. Do you have any comments on the energy items? Yeah, I, no, not out. So thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. The clock isn't reset yet. Mark, um, so uh, ever since 1970, uh, Nixon had the choice of thorium uh, reactors instead of the nuclear reactors that we're using that are, all, San Onofre, we're using them everywhere. They're also the same ones that uh, are literally s still radiating the ocean in Japan to this day. Really dangerous. Thorium is super cheap. The only thing uh, that's more prevalent probably and cheaper is sand. Um, and. Um, as far as thinking that these people care about your energy needs or trying to help you, that's just ridiculous. Uh, Mike Aguirre in an article about, I don't know, maybe six months ago, and another attorney who, I'm sorry, her name escapes me at the moment, but I'll get it for you guys, so please observe the next meeting. Um, he, he was stating how the CPUC who oversees the energy companies, and uh, uh, they're supposed to be watching out for us. Um, they're paid about $200,000. They live up in Sacramento. They have no interest or don't care what happens to us. It won't affect them. And uh, um, they specifically allow the electric companies to keep raising our rates. Um, these good people left uh, when they did the contract, I think it was in May of last year, they, they didn't even say anything that uh, a line was left out specifically saying that in the contract that the companies had to and I don't remember the exact words verbatim, but that they had to um, keep the price for the consumer as low as possible. That was left out. These people graciously allowed that to be left out. It never was before. And now we're all being screwed. And by the way, there was a four-year uh, increase that the SGG&E had uh, uh, given their plan to uh, the CPUC, and who screwed us again? And the last year was supposed to be, I think, 7%. I personally checked my bill from last February to this February. Uh, I mean, February of last year before to this year. And basically, uh, it's 40% up increase. This is such a scam. Thank you. Next speaker. Username Audra. So probably wouldn't be as big of a problem if Biden didn't give control of our energy grid to China, but whatever. Um, and so you want to enhance community resiliency to energy emergencies from existing power grid. And that's from electric vehicles and like AC units. But yet we wanna go to all electric vehicles. How are you gonna charge those? 
it's not gonna be possible. So like your whole plan is totally bogus, um, especially because you wanna go to um, banning cars, gas powered cars by 2035. Um, are you gonna give people money to buy these expensive electric vehicles? And Nora, you just were purchasing vans that are not GHG efficient. So I'm confused, are those gonna be out of service by 2035 or are you still gonna use those? Um, and I thought, because they were talking about um, hydroelectric power is less reliable because of the water. How are you gonna water all of those trees that you're gonna plant? I'm confused. Or is there unlimited water like we've been telling you? Um, yeah, and so then you wanna do a microgrid. Um, I don't know, I'm just, I just feel like you guys <laughs> act like you know what you're doing, but really it's totally BS. It's actually like a comedy show, it's fun. Cause I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm reading this and it's so, so funny that people don't see what's happening. And you guys talk about it so seriously, like, yeah, we're gonna do this, we're gonna reduce greenhouse gases by one million, blah, 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 blah. and it's gonna take 1800 years, but we're gonna do that for you guys. Just give us more funding, we need to seek more buckets of money. It's a joke, people need to pay attention. Thank you. We'll now hear from those that have requested to speak by phone. When it is your turn to speak, you'll be unmuted and hear a recording that will tell you to begin your comments after the beep. Again, I'd like to remind the callers they should mute their TV or live video stream before they begin speaking. And we'll begin with our first caller. Truth. Audra, it said those trees would be under a temporary watering system, so maybe they won't live too long. This item mentions unrelenting wildfires. Does that include the wild arsonists who keep setting fires in the exact same locations on the windiest of days? Yeah. Jim, about the community microgrids for the unincorporated areas, will those survive in those fires? The item says, rises in demand for electricity use, particularly for electric vehicles, are only expected to increase. Nathan, you said on May 27, 2021, quote, as we transition more into electric vehicles, if everyone charges at home, we're going to have tremendous grid problems, end quote. Well, Nathan, this item also admits that, quote, part of the threat to our power grid is the transition away from traditional sources of energy, the disruptive transition toward renewable sources of energy, leading to energy emergencies such as power outages and grid failures, and that solar and wind power do not consistently produce electricity, end quote. Well, not only that, the wind turbines have been killing thousands of eagles. The blades can hurl off. The turbines often collapse and can combust into flames. And the turbine dust control chemicals are flammable when dry. Then we have a partnership with SDG&E on their generator assistance program when SDG&E keep rising prices on us. For the public, take note that this item mentioned the proposal for a ban on sales of new gasoline-fueled vehicles in 2035. Overall, the idea of the carbon-neutral regional decarbonization framework plan belongs in the hazardous waste bin because it's toxic to the county. The end. Thank you. We'll go to our next caller. Hi. <clears throat> Hi, Supervisors. Paul Stinson again. Um, exploring options to enhance community resiliency to energy emergencies. I mean, Energy emergencies are not a new concept. I don't know why you're suddenly bringing this up now instead of, like, when it actually started happening. But um, four things occurred to me. Uh, dried food, turn off the lights when they're needed, those lines, and uh, possibly restrain San Diego gas and electric energy rates. Also, um, the use of tidal flows to generate energy might be in order. Um, I think I sent you an article on that. Um, 
and finally let me say, Nathan, I think it was kind of rude of you to interrupt Jim uh, in sort of in the middle of his uh, speaking. Anyway, thank you for your attention. Thank you. And Chair Fletcher, that concludes public comment on this item. All right. We've got a motion by Supervisor Desmond, seconded by Vice Chair Vargas, to adopt the recommendations as amended, as we outlined earlier. i uh, not seen any additional requests to speak. Let me ask the clerk to please call the roll. Thank you. Supervisor Anderson? Aye. Supervisor Desmond? Aye. Vice Chair Vargas? Vargas, aye. Chair Fletcher? Fletcher, aye. That motion passes unanimously with all supervisors who are present voting aye. Going to go to agenda item number nine, notice public hearing, uh, levies for mosquito vector and disease control benefit assessment and mosquito abatement and vector control service charges for fiscal year 22-23. Uh, let me ask court call for any public speakers on this item. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. We do have two total requests to speak on this item, one in individual in person and one requesting by phone. I'd also like to note for the record, we did not receive any e-comments. If uh, any members of the public that have requested to speak on this item by phone, if you could please dial into the conference line now using those instructions that were provided to you. We will begin with the in-person speaker and I'd like to invite forward Audra. You'll have two minutes to address the board. Use the name Audra. So we all know Bill Gates is releasing mosquitoes in Florida and California, whatever. Um, but you want to, it's a confirmation of levies for mosquito vector and disease control, benefit assessment and mosquito abatement and vector control service charge. So you're gonna be charging people to clear out mosquitoes. Um, and you want to uh, prevent vectors. Um, what about the vaccines? <laughs> Probably not, because that would, you know, make you guys look really bad like you were giving a death shot to people, which you totally are. Um, but you wanna ensure that only one in 100,000 people acquire West Nile. That's weird, because you want like zero people with HIV and zero people with COVID, but it's okay for one in 100,000 people to get West Nile. Good to know. And so you're gonna charge people, which is measured by the number of people who work, live, or visit the property. What is that? Are you gonna ask people how many people live there so that you can charge them more money? Um, and I meant to say before too, the gas power generators, haven't those been banned? Anyway, um, but yeah, if it's not approved, you can't provide the surfaces, but it's gonna be $12.3 million for mosquitoes to prevent mosquitoes. Hmm. That's interesting, very interesting because you want to prevent human disease, agents of human disease. These vaccines are a bioweapon. They're filled with herpes, hepatitis, HIV, AIDS, a whole lot of bad things, even little baby parts, cancerous ones. In fact, they use cell lines from cancerous fetal abortion parts, so. Good to know that you're actually protecting all people. Thank you. We'll, we will hear from our uh, um, those requested to speak by phone. When it is your turn to speak, you will be unmuted, and you will hear a recording that will tell you to begin your comments after the beep. I'd like to remind the callers that uh, you should mute your live uh, your live TV or video stream before be before you begin speaking. And we will begin with our first caller. This is true. Today, San Diego County Vector Control is spraying toxic chemicals all over the land for mosquito abatement. About 51 locations and 1,297 acres are being sprayed. This item's equity statement talks about reducing mosquitoes and protecting public health with the least negative impact to the environment. And the Vector Control Program website always claims that the larvicides used will not harm people, pets, plants, or wildlife. But once you read the safety data sheet information on each chemical, you will find all of those claims to be a complete lie. Here are some of the chemicals used in the program. Naturalers SDS says, hazard statement, harmful if inhaled, component, aluminum oxide, 
titanium oxide, flammability, not determined. Carcinogenicity may cause cancer, lung damage, including silicosis, fibrosis, and inflammation. Precautionary statements, hazards to humans and domestic animals. Vectomax's SPS says, precautionary statements, hazards to humans and domestic animals. Caution, harmful if absorbed through the skin or inhaled. Four stars SDS says, warning, hazard statement, may cause damage to organs through inhalation. Suspected of causing cancer. Harmful if inhaled. Carcinogenicity, too, in quote. Given that information, let's forget the millions of dollars in levies, service charges, and get rid of this toxic program. Come on, supervisors, put your money where your mouths are and actually protect the environment. And Chair Fletcher, that concludes public comment on this item. All right, I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second by Supervisor Anderson. We have a motion and a second. May I ask the clerk please call the roll? Thank you, Chair Fletcher. Supervisor Anderson? Aye. Supervisor Desmond? Aye. Vice Chair Vargas? Vargas Chair Fletcher? Fletcher, aye. That motion passes unanimously with all supervisors who are present and voting aye. We're going to go to agenda item number 10, notice public hearing, ordinance amendments to grading, clearing, and water courses ordinance to streamline the agriculture clearing permit process. I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second by Supervisor Desmond. We ask court call for the public speakers on item 10. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. We do have six total requests to speak, three individuals in person and three requesting to speak by phone. Also like to note for the record that we did not receive any e-comments on this item. Any of the members of the public that have requested to speak on this item by phone, if you could please dial into the conference line now using those instructions that were provided to you. We'll begin with the in-person speakers. I'd like to invite forward the three following individuals. You'll have two minutes to address the board. Audra, Consuelo, and Mark Dorian. Consuelo, once again, I address the people. Um, I already mentioned the video from Deborah Tavares regarding water shortages. Um, you can find it on the YouTube channel called Cal, uh, Cal Photo Gal, C A L F F O T O G A L. Energy is infinite. Water is abundant. Stop allowing politicians to sell you lies to have, living, to have you living in fear and scarcity. Take responsibility for yourselves. Enough with allowing government to dictate and run the show. Do you understand that you are in fact slaves? All of us are slaves to the government. Again, pay attention, get involved. They are working so very hard and fast to fulfill their agenda. No matter what state you escape to, the agenda is global. There is no escaping. Stand your ground where you're at. Come on, California. Come on, world. Come on, San Diego County. No more complying. No more asking permission. Take back your freedom. Live fearlessly. No one is coming to save you. Not the government. Not the church, not Buddha, not Yeshua, not Trump, not Biden, no one. It's up to us. That's right. I use the name Audra. Okay. So agro clearing permit process. So if I want to clear my land, I have to get a permit to do so. Um, what? is that about? And then I gotta ask you what I can do with it. Is that weird or what? Probably just to me. Um, but this is, um, you wanna, cause you have your future drafts, your conservation projects for multi-species. So then I kinda wonder, I mean, what about the mosquitoes? <laughs> That is so mean to kill them. And you wanna kill also rodents and ticks, animals capable of transmitting disease, even eye gnats. I mean, why not keep those around? Why are we discriminating against 
species, shouldn't they all be saved? I feel like that's weird. It's not very nice. I mean, I think we should just keep mosquitoes around, especially the GMO ones that Bill Gates has going on. Um, but it's gonna take three to four years to complete environmental reviews. So does that mean that if I wanna clear my land, it's gonna take you three or four years to tell me if I can do it? Um, and then I'm gonna have to pay you to get a permit to actually do that? Hmm, sounds like asking for permission for something I should be able to do freely. I don't know, I thought the Constitution was the law of the land and that we have the ability to have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Is that not right? I don't know, you guys are the ones that took an oath to it. Do you remember what it is? Nope, okay, good. It makes sense, because you're doing everything that goes against your oath. This is totally bullshit. Thank you, next speaker. Mark, and I'm quoting from your document here. Um, farmers are required to apply for agricultural clearing permits prior to the clearing of vegetation from their land, and permits are subject to environmental review. So, Audrey was exactly right, of course, it's their land. And uh, <clears throat> this uh, reminds me of the fire retardant you wanna use uh, in an area in front of the uh, people's houses up in the country. Um, uh, which is totally toxic. And the idea that you're going to oversee this to help them is just absurd. It, it's just another scam to control every tiny aspect of everybody's life, especially in the rural areas, because you're all about Agenda 21. That's a real term. It's the agenda for the 21st century from the United Nations. And their goal, as Nathan well knows, is to get the people out of the rural areas which is why fires are probably being set. Well, I'm sure they are, I, because it, it's what I do if I was a billionaire who wanted to get everybody out of the country. And uh, it raises, of course, the insurance companies triple their rates for homeowners insurance, so they can't afford a mortgage, they can't even own a house out there. And then they're stuck coming here and living at the beach homeless, trying to get into your stack and pack a million dollar plus apartment complexes. Um, such a complete and total scam. Deborah Tavares has many videos on YouTube. Uh, anybody out there on the internet, you really need to see those to understand what these people are doing. Uh, you have no clue. The last thing they care about is you and your water needs or, or uh, helping you in any way. Uh, they wanna get you out of the country. They wanna take away your guns, any good guns that would be worth having, except the Newsom pop, uh, pop gun with a 10 round clip. That's a joke to any crim criminal. And Nathan, of course, as a Marine, should know that. But you violate your oath constantly and don't seem to care about helping the poor people defend themselves. Oh, my two minutes are up. What a joke. Thank you. Now we will hear from those that have requested to speak by phone. When it is your turn to speak, you will be unmuted and you will hear a recording that will tell you to begin your comments after the beep. We would like to remind the callers they should mute their TV or live video stream before they begin speaking, and we will begin with our first caller. a hard time hearing you. Um, we'll come back to this caller. We'll go to the next caller. This is truth and I'm here to split the script and speak truth to power. I really like Consuelo's point about saving ourselves and also Audra's concern about the poor mosquitoes, I have to say. In 2018, the plan was to improve housing affordability in the unincorporated area by streamlining grading permits and to decrease time and cost of processing agricultural clearing permits. I'm not sure why the history is even mentioned in this item because the item's actually about the multiple species conservation plan. Those plans have already acquired 56,000 acres of land 
using 85 different species as excuses, including the trademark rats and toads, and even today's threatening mountain lions, ready to bite our faces off and kill our pets. Just one question about the multiple species conservation plan. Does that include saving the bald eagles and the golden eagles from the deadly wind turbines? Because we've already lost 2,000 eagles in California alone. But I know the real overall goal of the conservation plan is, that a, is about acquiring a total of almost 100,000 acres of land out of the hands of the public. When these lands are taken, there is rarely a guarantee that residents will even be allowed to enjoy the land their taxpayer money bought. So this streamlining process of agricultural clearing permits appears to be pushed just to aid in land acquisition by county government. Land monopolists like Bill Gates and his mosquitoes. Thank you. We'll go to the next caller. Good morning. My name is Hannah Bay. I'm the executive director of the San Diego County Farm Bureau. I am here today to thank the supervisors for taking action on this item. This item is a request from the agricultural community in San Diego County. It has been a request from our organization and the 5,500 farmers for nearly two decades. And we are so grateful that today we are here to see an action taking place where we are helping our agricultural community streamline the regulatory, regulatory framework. The most prevalent barrier to farming successfully in the County of San Diego is the existing grading and clearing ordinance. Our County Farm Bureau receives more calls from local farmers struggling with the existing agricultural grading and clearing ordinance than any other regulation in the region. Issues arise when farmers want to expand their farm, start a new farm, or experience neighbor complaints. The agricultural community in the county of San Diego is collapsing under stressors related to urban encroachment, the pandemic, overregulations, water prices, and since 2010, the agricultural acreage has declined by 26%, a loss of approximately 80,000 acres. We are so grateful today to have this agenda item appear in front of the Board of Supervisors, and we thank you for your thoughtful consideration in moving forward so that we can make some real-life changes to assist our agricultural community in thriving. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Chair Fletcher, not seeing uh, any other public speakers in the call-in queue, that would conclude public comment on this item. Thank you. Let's go to Supervisor Desmond. Thank you, Chair. Appreciate it. Um, I, I just want to say thank you to staff. I mean, you're, this is uh, a, a great, pro great, great thing you're pulling all of these items together. And thanks for talking to the uh, Farm Bureau, the building industry, uh, BIA, the Land Development Technical Working Group, and environmental groups, uh, getting them all together, getting input, and pulling, putting together a document that uh, probably not everybody agrees with, but it's, it's I think, a, a good, good working effort going forward. So I appreciate all the, all the outreach that was done on this, and uh, I'll move to approve this item, if I haven't already. Oh, you already did. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank all you, right. Supervisor Desmond. Um, we have a motion by myself, seconded by Supervisor Desmond, to approve item 10. Let me ask the clerk to please call the roll. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. Supervisor Anderson. Aye. Supervisor Desmond. Aye. Vice Chair Vargas. Vargas, aye. And Chair Fletcher. Fletcher, aye. That motion passes unanimously with all supervisors who are present voting aye. Uh, we're going to go to uh, board committee reports or updates uh, if any members of the we board. I think we're stopped. Yeah. Your conduct is now disrupting the meeting. It's your second warning. Vice Chair Vargas. Uh, thank you, Chair. I wanted to, um, as many of you know, I have the South Bay uh, Task Force that focuses a lot on the environmental justice issues that are um, impacting our community in the Tijuana River Valley mm -hmm. area. Um, and so I just wanted to announce that today uh, we have added a new addition of a new category system to inform the community about water quality in our county beaches. Um, you know, it's gonna provide beach goers with timely and accurate information about water quality while keeping our beaches open to the greatest extent possible. More importantly, it's gonna allow us to protect the health of our uh, county families and visitors and still provide equitable beach access for everyone. And so I just wanted to mention this because um, Supervisor Tara Lawson, Reamer and myself work very closely with not only our county team, um, but also uh, with EPA, et cetera, to make sure that we were able to identify these 
three new tiers of uh, new, quarter, new water quality warning systems. So there's going to be an advisory level, which will be posted when test results exceed the state health standards. A warning category will be used when uh, testing exceeds state health standards, and then uh, closures were, are issued when there is uh, sewage in the water. And so uh, just to make sure that I emphasize, um, this is happening in the communities of, of Coronado, Imperial Beach, and um, in the Silva Strand area, because for many years our community members and local government you know, we're requesting that we have a, a quicker and more reliable method to determine the beach water quality uh, in our communities. And so we have a new test, which we started doing on May 5th. And I wanted to make sure that I share it because there's a lot of misinformation that's been out in the in the public and in the media. And so I want to just make sure that everybody knows that this new D DDPCR water quality testing is a result of a lot of advocacy from our community. And we heard loud and clear. And so the EPA has provided technical assistance to the county. And, and this rapid test and advisory threshold um, really has been had a lot of peer review and it's con consistent with EPA criteria. And so there's a lot of advancements in technology. It's not what we wanna hear that we have to close our beaches, right? But, but we wanna do what's right and what's safe for our community. And as I said in, in one of the interviews, um, we don't wanna, we wanna make sure that the beaches are open so they're safe. We invite and make sure that uh, tourism is able to come and enjoy. Uh, but at the same time, we want to make sure that people are safe and healthy. And so uh, we're going to continue to do the work on the ground. We've declared the Tijuana River Valley a public health care crisis. We've allocated $10 million in um, the budget last year for the Tijuana River Valley. And then we're going to continue to work with the federal government to make sure that we get the additional $300 million that we need. But um, I want to just emphasize that I think both Supervisor Las and and I understand the impacts of the closures on the communities and on our businesses. We want to keep our beaches open. We want to make sure that uh, that people are health and safety safe. Um, and more importantly, I just want to remember, remind everybody that if you go to the beaches and there is no sign, that means that it's actually safe to get into the beach now because we've tested it, and so it's 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 totally cool to get in there. So enjoy our beaches during the summer, and I wanted to make sure we share that with everyone. So thank you very much for the time. Thank you very much. Uh, we have two adjournments in memory from Vice Chair Vargas, uh, and we will turn it over to you at this time. Thank you, Chair. Um, the first adjourned memory is for Maria Navarro Holmes. Um, today I want to adjourn in her memory who worked for the San Diego County Health Department for 15 years from 1975 to 1990 as a social worker and aide for senior citizens. She was born in Sonora, Mexico on June 21st, 19, 1922 and moved to Tijuana in the late 1950s as a single mother. She raised three sons. In 1961, she uh, married United States Marine Corps veteran Paul Holmes and immigrated to the United States in 1961. She retired after working for the county's health department for 15 years and passed away on May 28th at the age of 29, 99. I'm sorry. We adjourn today's meeting in Maria Navarro's home's honor and memory and offer our heartfelt condolences to her loving family and many friends, and we thank her for her commitment to our communities. Um, I also want to adjourn in memory of Benedicto Beni Esparza Jr., born on July 3rd, 1938 in Isleta, Isleta, Texas, a community near El Paso. After graduating from Cathedral High School, Benny majored in business from Texas Western University, now named the University of Texas, El Paso, and enlisted in the United States Navy where he was stationed in San Diego and Japan. He married Angela Ochoa and had five children, Angelita, Margarita, Benny, Lalo, and Diana. After his service in the Navy, he returned to help run the family business, the White Elephant Bowling Lanes and Cafe, with his father and was one of the first and only bowling alleys in the country owned by a Mexican-born immigrant. Benny was an avid reader and took it upon himself to teach his children to read in English and Spanish. He passed away on May 23rd and is deeply missed by his loving friends and family. We adjourn today's meeting in Benny's honor and memory. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Vice Chair. We will now resume non-agendized public communication. Thank you, Chair Fletcher. We do have uh, four total requests to speak on matters not listed on the agenda, all coming by phone. So for those that have requested to speak via phone, if you could please dial into the conference line now using those instructions that were provided to you. We'll, we will begin with our first caller. Uh, you, I would like to remind the callers they should mute their TV or live video stream before they begin speaking. And again, if you could please state your name before beginning your comments. You'll have two minutes to address the board. Good morning, board. My name is Kathleen Lippitt, and as a public health practitioner and researcher of public health policies, I appreciate sources of information that follow the data. 
Sam, Smart Approaches to Marijuana, is a, a nationally recognized resource for scientifically driven and evidence-based research that has not been influenced by economic conflicts of interest. Their goal has been to prevent another big tobacco. This board likely tires of public health educators and youth educators bringing you the information research to which you have turned a blind eye. And that is why information and research that you, that you continue to hear from them. They care about children, teens, young adults, and the potential harms to communities and the increased challenges your one-sided treatment of, of the marijuana issue causes. Recently, Sam noted that 48 members of Congress wanted to effectively legalize marijuana at the federal level, but their reasons had everything to do with industry influence and nothing to do with the documented harm of marijuana. This board's biased approach and capitulation to serve the marijuana industry over the public's interests has resulted in silencing and or ignoring the voices of unincorporated communities and all members of the public trying to get you to pay attention to the harms of marijuana. The board has never conducted any cost-benefit analysis. And here are some of the final financial costs an independent cost analysis of the marijuana industry would have discovered for you. Annual costs from negative outcomes over $216 million. That includes regular, regulatory costs, drug driving, fatalities and injuries, property damage, ER visits, marijuana manufacturing, extraction lab explosions, increased homelessness, workplace absenteeism, and injuries. Thank you. Your time is up. We'll go to the next caller. Truth. Hey, Nathan, I saw your wife, Lorena, on a Milken Institute video about mapping out the future of work in California. You know, one of those topics none of us voted for. At Milken, she bragged about her independent job-killing bill, AB5, about how she dreams of paying adults to stay home, about paying children just to go to school, and how it's not sexy to fix EDD fraud. The Milken Institute is the same organization that featured Anthony Fauci, Gates Partner Lab, Partner Foo Lab, Rockefeller's Rick Bright, and others in 2019 talking about how they wanted to, quote, blow the health system up. If you want to get sexy and influenza, you stay in the vaccine space. Synthetic, nucleic, messenger RNA-based. An outbreak of a virus could occur in China. We could get the RNA sequence from them, beam it to a number of regional centers, if not even in your home at some point, and print those vaccines on a patch and self-administer. When you do get a universal flu vaccine, get it to six-month-old kids, end quote. Isn't that what we're seeing? Milken Institute even has an interview with Governor Newsom where he spoke about, quote, the world we're trying to build and his framework for communitarianism. Tara is also a believer in communitarianism. On July 13, 2021, Tara said, quote, I have to come down not on what's good for my own daughter, but what's good for the collective sacrifices for the community and the collective, end quote. The communitarian ideology holds the rights of the community over the rights of the individual, the complete opposite of the American belief of individual freedoms. These people are dangerous to our freedoms and to our lives. Go away. And Chair Fletcher, not seeing any other uh, members of the public requesting to speak, that concludes non-agenda public communication. And that concludes the business before the board today. We will now adjourn into uh, closed session at 4 p.m. The board will reconvene at 4 p.m. today for a special meeting. The next regular meeting of the board will take place on Wednesday, July 20th, 2022.